Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. And so with us today in the studio are recent graduates, uh, Sierra Airman uh, Jonathan Zayas Fernandez. Did I say it right? Zayas Fernandez. Zayas Fernandez. And, uh, and maybe Jonathan for uh, broadcasting. <laughs> no problem. And uh, Ms. Sheila Ayala. Yes. Ayala. 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 Mm -hmm. Ayala. Yeah. <laughs> so Jonathan and Sheila are with us here in the studio today. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, both their experience uh, at ALS uh, and a little bit about uh, their shops that they're going to be returning to with the, with the knowledge uh, that they just gained at ALS and the practice uh, that they put in. Uh, so starting with you, Jonathan, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, where you're from and then uh, what you do here at Edwards Air Force Base. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, my name is uh, Senior Airman Jonathan Saez Fernandez. Um, I am an air traffic controller here at uh, Edwards Tower. Um, I am from Orlando, Florida. I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, but yeah, again, air traffic controller. Uh, probably one of the best jobs that we have in the Air Force. So, I'm very happy about that. Awesome. Thanks. Absolutely. So, I recently had the the honor and privilege to, to do an OSS tour. And you guys fall under uh, OSS, right? Yes, sir. Um, and, and we were able to go up into the tower and kind of see the views up there and kind of what you do. And we just happened to be timing just right where somebody was being certified. And I understand that's a pretty, pretty big deal here to get certified, right? And I understand you are certified? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So if you could just walk us through that, you know, quickly, you know, kind of okay. what that happens and why it's so hard to get certified here to come to. Okay, well, uh, for sure, uh, at Edwards Tower, um, we have, starting out, uh, we start with the flight data position. That position, basically what it is, it's a, a position that you are the central hub of the tower cab in that uh, moment. So you are the one who uh, handles the scheduling of the aircraft. Also, you get to talk to many different facilities who want to talk to uh, the tower at the moment as well as you are also the primary crash phone ringer. So if there was an, uh, any form of emergency or anything of the sort, that would be the person to press the button and say, hey, we need to get everybody together and tackle this exercise, or sorry, this uh, emergency. And so uh, you start off in that position. The second position would be ground control. Uh, sorry about the first position, it takes around a month, two weeks to a month, depending on how well you do once you're done with your uh, position certification guide is what it's called. And then you move on to ground control. Ground control, you are in charge of all the aircraft and also all the vehicles on the airfield as well. Um, and so that took, takes around three months. Then you move over to local control, and that's when you're in charge of all the aircraft in the air, as well as your airspace, and making sure that everything is being done safely. Uh, here at Edwards, since we do so much testing, and we also do so much uh, just proficiency as well, especially with the test pilot school and everything going on, um, we have I would say, I think the number went down a bit, but when I first started, it was around 17 runways if we put everything together. We have two big ones, North Base and South Base, and we have all the ones that, on the lake bed. And so all the information that all the trainees, as they started, all the information that they're gathering and putting into play, it takes around a year and a half, uh, almost two years to get rated. Um, so for two years, you're in training, and so it can definitely put a hinder onto a person and. Um, it's a big washout rate, I would say, due because of so much stress. You have so much that you're going on, you have two years to accomplish it, and you have to be at 100% in those two years because safety is such a priority. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for the crowd watching, uh, I, I've known this for quite a while just because I've been in this Air Force for so long, but to, to realize that we have enlisted, senior, we have senior airmen in that cab pushing 10, right, and keeping sure. 10 from hitting each other, um, sure. it's, a, it's a big deal. It really is. It's awesome. So thanks for what you do up there. It's really cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for kind of rolling it out, explaining to us, you know, what that entails. It's, it's easy to say, you know, I'm an air traffic controller, but what, what does that really mean? How hard is it to get to that point where you're the one in control right. in that tower? It's really cool. Yeah. It does get fun telling officers what to do sometimes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. And it sounds like, uh, just when we were talking before, that there's some unique challenges here at Edwards because of the diversity of the number of different types of aircraft. Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, for sure. So here at Edwards, since we do so much testing and also there's so much going on um, on all types of airframes. So we work with T-38s, we work with a C-17 that's flying right, right now. Uh, we have F-16s going on. We have all these heavy uh, aircraft as well. And they all um, kind of, they're all different characteristics. So if you have a smaller plane in front of a faster plane, um, it definitely 
it takes a lot of adjusting, and so that's why we have so much experience that we have to, uh, or a lot of training, I would say, because it's up to you to gauge what distance you have to have behind them in order to uh, have them fly efficiently, safely, and get the mission done at the same time. Um, with heavy aircraft, they create weight turbulence. And so basically what it is, is two tornadoes that come off the side of the wings because they're creating so much lift. And uh, because of that, you cannot have an aircraft come right too close to them because there is a possibility that the aircraft behind them may lose control and maybe even possibly flip over. So here at, um, we're trying to get down on the training portion, more visuals in order for a person to understand how weight turbulence uh, affects, uh, you know, planes and pilots and how it affects uh, just flying in general and why it's so important. Um, and so that is one of our biggest challenges, but at the same time, we're also dealing with people who are uh, executing a mission while others are still learning um, their aircraft, how to test and uh, um, other very important missions, I would say, right? So we have other squadrons that we work with. It's not only just F-16 C-38s or even the heavy C-17s or anything. We have the F-35s who are also uh, Navy and we have Marines in there as well. We have uh, Air Force with us as well. And they also have a whole mission to take care of. So we kind of go off based of what do we have to get, um, who is priority right now? Is there a person going through proficiency? Does this mission need to get done to better the Air Force right now? Right, so it goes into play of if this person wants to turn right, okay, we think about the mission first. So it's like, you need to turn right, but why? Does this person also need to turn right, or who takes priority? Right, so it's just kind of like that. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan, for that. Appreciate it. I think all our viewers really, uh, it's really awesome for you to be able to share what it is that you do. Um, so, Sheila, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, you and your background. If you could tell us a little bit about your story, where are you from, uh, what brought you to Edwards Air Force Base, and uh, where you were. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm from Barstow, California, a little town on the way to Las Vegas. Um, I started my civil service career in uh, 2008. Um, I worked at the Marine Depot Maintenance Command in Yermo, California, as a heavy equipment mechanic. And um, I saw a job opening on USA Jobs for a heavy equipment mechanic here at Edwards Air Force Base. And um, I got interviewed and I got the job. So I started here in 2019. And um, after a year of being a heavy equipment mechanic, I moved up to production controller with a uh, LRS. And um, now I'm the production controller with the fleet management office. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and for our viewers out there who uh, may not be familiar with LRS or uh -huh. uh, production controller, could you just tell them a little bit more about what that, what that means? Yes. Um, we manage all the vehicles on base. So um, any Blue Fleet um, vehicles, you have to turn them into us and we get your preventative maintenance done, your oil changes. We make sure that if there's any safety items that we have to make sure that they're done before we issue them back to the units. Um, we are the liaisons for your GSA vehicles, so any of the police cars and stuff like that, we maintain and make sure that those are under compliance with preventative maintenance. Um, we um, do the accident and abuse programs, so um, if you're involved in any accidents or abuses, um, our office handles those and makes sure that they are routed through the right channels. And um, we pretty much support the whole entire base uh, any vehicle needs. How many vehicles are we talking about? Um, we have 271 uh, Blue Fleet vehicles oh, wow. and approximately uh, 568 GSA vehicles. Oh wow, so yeah. over 700 vehicles. That's yeah. pretty significant. That's uh, a lot of vehicles. I can't. Yeah. Got a two run. That's yeah. right. Keep, keep, get us on time where we need to be. Yeah. You know, I tell you what, I can't even keep up with the maintenance on my own vehicle is much less 700 or more than 700. Oh, yes. So, yeah, we um, have an awesome, awesome team. All of us can do with just one person. We have everybody works together and um, great, great friendships and everything. That's great. Yeah. So you, you both have very diverse backgrounds. Yeah. Um, so what what did you get out of the Airman Leadership School, right? If you could just tell us a little bit about some of the highlights or some of your favorite parts of uh, ALS, what are some of the things that you didn't expect, um, but you, you found to be rewarding? You want me to go through? Um, I'll go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
for me, uh, one of the rewarding um, things was actually growing a lot of friendships, and I made a lot of connections with everybody I wasn't expecting. Um, being a civilian for so long and not being having a military background, it was really, really inspiring to see how young the airmen are and how much aspirations they have for their life. You know what, how much dreams they have, and um, me being at that age, I don't remember. You know the goals like they have, and I think being in the Air Force really does, you know, sets you up and um, makes you think about your future a little bit more. And that class does show you, you know, what paths you want to make in life, you know, and what connections you want to make in life and, and to protect your connections with people. You know, everyone is a human at the end of the day and, and just to cherish those connections that you make with people and make them count. That's correct. Yeah. I feel like uh, with me, the biggest thing that I attained from it was more of how to deal with airmen who also have such a different personality than I. Uh, someone who may be more, um, you know, black and white, I need to know the facts compared to a person of how does this make me feel? You know, how, am I, do I feel important to the mission? Um, there's going to be some airmen who just want to be like, okay, I know for sure that I need to do X, Y, and Z. And so how, when a problem comes up that may make them feel uncomfortable, how can I use those um, kind of characteristics or tools that ALS has given us in order to tackle said problem? So I think that was my biggest one. Any uh, big surprises? For me, being a civilian, uh, doing PT <laughs> was a, a pretty big surprise. I wasn't expecting it. But honestly, um, the team was great. I mean, um, everybody motivated you, and it wasn't nothing that you couldn't handle. And um, yeah, there was no judgment at all. Everybody was great. And I, I actually loved it because when you're doing PT together, you're not doing it by yourself. You know, everyone's just there. You say, you can do it. <laughs> You know, so. the camaraderie. Yes. Say, everybody's suffering at the same time. Exactly. So it, it, yes. You, know, you come together that way. Yes. That's really awesome. Uh -huh. um, I feel like with me, uh, one, something that I learned the most about ALS was about myself, uh, which was the biggest hit. Because whenever you're going into an airman leadership school, or I feel like any kind of PME of any source, um, you're kind of just going like, you know what? Let's get through it. But then whenever they hit you with something that kind of. Uh, tickles your heartstrings, as they say, right? You're kind of just like, wow, like, I didn't know I was this kind of person. I didn't know that I had these attributes. Uh, we had a feedback session where everybody in the class was able to basically talk about um, what do we feel this person can improve on and also something good um, about it. And then whenever you're kind of looking at yourself, you're constantly focused on how bad I am doing or what I can improve on, what can I do? But then you forget to look at what other people see. And so whenever we receive that feedback and people are telling you, hey, like, I think that you're an overall great person, or I think that um, you are a little too hard on yourself. You kind of take a look at yourself and you go, wow, I didn't, I didn't think I was. Or that's something to always remember and keep in the back of your mind. Like you are a good person. You are a person. So That's a really great uh, point. I think we should probably stress for our viewers, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, when we introduce the cadre, um, but the Airman Leadership School is really geared around uh, preparing folks, preparing airmen, uh, to be first-line supervisors and really join, begin that journey of formal uh, leadership. Um, uh, so, so one of the things I wanted to ask you was, were there any other, so that sounds like a feedback exercise was really helpful, were there any other things that you were able to take away uh, in particular as you prepare for that uh, supervisory journey that you um, yeah, for me, um, we did a lot of working together, a lot of um, PowerPoints and getting in front of the class and having to present. And um, that took away like of how you're talking to people. You know, you, you want to be direct, but not too sensitive. You know, when you want to get something across, like there's a point to be serious and then there's a point to, you know, to get to know somebody too. So I took that away because I'm kind of always like the nice person, you know, like um, I don't really see no wrong in nothing, but sometimes there are consequences that you do need to, you know, reprimand, but 
that only is the end of a friendship. You know, it's, it's just part of the job, and you know, you, you can move forward from that. Yeah, I think focusing on those soft skills is really important. Yeah. And um, the ALS curriculum obviously has changed probably significantly uh, from when I went through 20 some years ago. And so focusing on it, and both of you are talking soft skills. Yeah. And those kind of things. Yeah. Knowing yourself, knowing how to deal with people that don't think like you or, you know, need did something different right. uh, and honing in on that, kind of parting that out our new supervision is so important. So it's really cool that you pull that out of it. It's awesome. Yeah, um, you know, I feel like whenever uh, we entered, I was expecting to be basically drowned in Air Force Blue. But really, it was more of, yes, we got through the Air Force uh, part, but let's talk about the human part. Let's talk about how to deal with this, uh, this problem, this person. How do we feel? How can we be better? Uh, how can we develop better, like, habits? You know, what are we telling ourselves whenever we wake up in the morning? Is it going to be a bad day? Is it going to be a good day, right? Uh, those important key aspects of your everyday life that you're not really paying attention to. I mean, we even had this whole uh, exercise where we're putting on this aura ring and then this smartwatch that is like, uh, right. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, it, the aura ring was very important because it lets you know how much sleep you have. Uh, your eye movement whenever you're sleeping um, and also how much deep sleep you have. And so whenever you're feeling cranky, you wake up, uh, all you had to do is just basically put the aura ring close to your phone and it downloads the data or refreshes it. And then as soon as you open up the app, it tells you what you have. And so I'd be like, oh, okay, no wonder I'm cranky today. Yeah. Or maybe, oh, I feel well rested, you know, and it's all because of that. So I think that was a great exercise and it helped me a lot uh, realize what I need more of and what I need less of. Yeah, those bat the body battery insight it is good because I can look on there and say, ooh, that's why I feel this way. And I can adjust and, and purposefully tackle things differently or maybe not tackle things that take a lot of, you know, my exactly. energy, if you will, uh, late in the day or when my body battery body battery is low. So it's yeah, it's it's cool that insight, you know, into human nature and how we approach things so important. It kinda of made me feel also like uh, I should invest in the like something of the sort because we do have to give those back yeah, we're doing, right? yeah. <laughs> but it made me think i do have to invest into something of the sort because i can be able as a supervisor if i'm not having a good day and out of nowhere i get hit with something yeah. that is super tough to deal with in the moment i can just kind of take a quick second and look at me like okay after so long of this whole watch telling me you know where i am how, can i feel it now my heart you know, it's my heart rate racing right now. And so I tackle myself first really quick, see, uh, put myself to the side and say, am I good? Can I tackle this right now? And then if I am, let's tackle it right now. If not, let's take a breather, then we'll tackle. So it was really important, as always. Yeah. No, that's really great. And uh, I mean, it, it's awesome that uh, the Air Force gives us this time, really. I mean, it's a privilege to be able to have professional military education and be able to get this time away from the work center and like you said focus on yourselves focus on those soft skills yes, uh be able to build up your, your leadership toolkit and, and think about how to how to build the habits and can actually be able to get after when you move back to your work center uh, before we introduce uh the cadre uh i want to make sure that we uh, remind everybody to text in their questions 707-412-8922 uh because if you have any questions for our warriors of the week uh, who are recent graduates of the Airman Leadership School uh, that we just celebrated just last night at uh, the graduation ceremony, which had great energy. It was well, a lot of fun. The most spirited I've been to, and I've been to a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you guys had some just amazing school. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I guess that's where all that rock star and monster went. I, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all gone, yeah. And they're all gone. <laughs> Comment on it. It turns out that by the numbers, your class consumed 33% more rock oh. star and wow. you know, monster and energy drinks uh, than the other. Because your body better was telling you your most. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was Over checking their watches. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty, pretty great. great. Uh, you know, every time uh, at graduation, uh, when they come in, they recite the Airman's Creed. Yes, it's yes. just, it is, uh, it tugs on your heartstrings. It does. Uh, like said before. It, it is an awesome, awesome ceremony. I'm glad that we were able to celebrate you yesterday. Thank you so much uh, for coming on to uh, our town hall and for sharing your perspectives uh, so that hopefully other folks uh, who are out there who are interested in uh, applying to uh, the Airman Leadership School uh, and, uh, and, and participating in that. It's, it is. It is obviously special that we can incorporate our civilian airmen here at uh, Edwards Air Force Base and 
have a much more inclusive uh, ALS experience. Very, very unique capability across the Air Force for us to better support the Air and the yeah. experience. And, and the enrichment that goes both ways. Right. Yeah. Where we normally would wear a mission uniform to get that exposure and the same for you know, yeah. or your, your uniform to get that exposure. It's, it's invaluable. Yeah. So uh, are there any questions for our Warriors of the Week before we clear them off? Doesn't look like it. All right. Okay. So, Ms. Alaya? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Ms. Alaya and uh-huh. uh, Airman uh, Zayas Fernandez, uh, thank you uh, very much for your time. Thank you appreciate for having us. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thank Have a you great so weekend. much. Have a great weekend. Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Yes, sir. So uh, next up in the hot seat. Yeah, we, I think we've got some ALS cadre coming up here, some instructors. We've got Texar Noland and yes, Texar Schoolmaker. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Thanks uh, for having us. Thanks. No, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. We're, we're in your, your yard. Home. Home. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. welcome. Yeah. Right. We're in your yard right Happy now. Happy to have so. you. Yeah. <laughs> Now this is fantastic. Uh, I think it's absolutely terrific that we're able to come down here and showcase uh, a big part of uh, what we do here at Ducati Two, right? So, so much of what we talk about and focus on is our our normal day to day mission, which is the modernization mission, uh, work and test and evaluation. But Ducati Two is powered by people, uh, and maybe their their training and their leadership training. Uh, and this is where they come to you. So, uh, what we really like to do is a get to know both of you, but then have you tell us. And all the viewers out there, uh, just a little give us the overview of what's what's in the Airman Leadership School. Kind of talk a little bit about the curriculum, uh, maybe even so, you know, for folks who are interested, how do they learn more about it and uh, get the program? So, if we can start with you, Scoob, you can just tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. All right. So I'm Sergeant Scoobmaker, first name Dana Rose. I am uh, stationed here and only here at Edwards Air Force Base. I'm primarily security forces by trade. I came on board to be a cadre or an instructor back in June of 2020. So unfortunately, my time is coming to an end here. Um, it is pretty sad, but I am very excited to get back to the Defender World PCS to K&N and just boots on the ground, start running. Other than that, call signs coach, and that's so, really all there is about me. It, you made an interesting point, right? You're going back to your career field. And, and, and DSDs, when we call you to do that, or you volunteer to do that, uh, you gain so much different perspective about other Air Force AFSCs, other other things that happen in our Air Force, and then you take it back to your career field. And your career field's enriched for it. So if, if you're watching, so happen to be, and you're thinking about that DSD, and you're eligible, uh, give it a chance. 100%. I, I think uh, the Air Force is better for it. You're better for it, and your career field is better for it. So. Sounds like you really enjoyed your time. I loved it. I loved it so much. If I could continue to do it, I would. But you know, the Defender is tugging me back, and I'm ready to go and take everything that I've learned here and try to just pay that forward. Absolutely. Keep pushing forward. Yeah. So last last night was your last class. It was. All right. So my last class. Uh, and we're doing some quick math, but it looks like in your time here, you've influenced as well over 400 students. Uh, which is a pretty extraordinary influence uh, to be able to shape that many minds uh, in such a short period of time. Really. It's, yeah, it's really rewarding and humbling, but honestly, uh, I feel like I, if I could impart half of what they've given to me over the last three years, I feel like I can mark this as very successful. Um, I've learned so much more from all of the airmen that we've been fortunate enough to interact with than I could ever imagine. So I'm very, very fortunate, very blessed, very lucky to have this job. Awesome. Thanks, Coach, for having us. <laughs> All right, sir, Ashley Nolan. Yep. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be here. At, uh, All right. Um, so I'm Sar- uh, Tech Sergeant Ashley Nolan. I have been at ALS about two years now, so I got one more year before I'm as great as our Coach Scoon here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but my background is C-17's uh, Loadmaster. So I started off at Charleston, was there about five years, and then I came over to Edwards in 2018. So I spent some time at the 418th Test Squadron, and then I came over here to ALS. Uh, My background is education, so I have my bachelor's in education, and it's one of my passions. So I really enjoy being here, interacting with the students. Um, it's, It's really awesome every day. 
Aside from that, I do have a family as well. So my daughter is about to turn one at the end of the month. So she's got a little baby running around. And then uh, my husband, I am Mel to Mel. So he is on the bomber program. So yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's really great when, when opportunities uh, align, right? And Air Force needs uh, align where you can actually do something that you're, you know, you, you love doing and your education's in. Uh -huh. And it doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens, it's, yeah. it's just, I mean, it's magical. Right? Perfect opportunity, yeah. yeah. Luckily, just my timing matched up. I know a lot of people want to come over here and they want to apply for the job, but it's, a lot of it has to do with that timing. Timing. Yeah. Yeah. I just got lucky. So. Needs of the Air Force, <laughs> releasing, I mean, it's, it's not, sometimes it's not easy to get the yes. folks that want to, to teach over here. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, if we could, since our viewers are, uh, are very diverse uh, folks, right? Some folks very familiar with ALS, some recent graduates, uh, others uh, maybe. Maybe but it's the first time they're hearing about it. Maybe it's the yeah. first time they're hearing about it, right? There, there's a good chance that there's uh, a number of folks out there who just didn't even know we had this. So what would you tell them, you know, just a, the overview of what the school is, you know, how long it is, uh, how many students in the class, that kind of thing? For sure. So uh, the course typically runs about 24 academic days. It's 192 hours of curriculum that we deliver over the span of those 24 days, hitting four main modules. We have Air Force culture, leadership, mission, and problem solving. And the students can expect to learn just a variety of, of theories and skills, concepts that they can now take and apply when they get back into their, their home units and they get those airmen underneath them to supervise them. Yeah, a typical day would run from about 8.30 to 4.30 uh, would be the classroom instruction time. Uh, we do PT about once a, once a week, so uh, Miss Ayala was talking about that. Uh, it, it is a good time with the students. They do all work together very well, um, so we do have a lot of fun with that. we got a diverse PT sessions that we do, so we got uh, Miss Johnson, Miss Muscles Johnson, if you're watching, spin class. Uh, do not challenge the first shirts to a volleyball game. It doesn't turn out well. Uh, maybe kickball though. Kickball I have heard uh, that might work out. That might work out in the students' favor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we have a few different PT sessions that we do and we run. And it is kind of like we just want the effort. So if you are a civilian that is a little nervous about that aspect, if you just give what you got. Um, we will work with it. It's a lot of it is just self-paced. So yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah. so what you're saying is, don't be scared of the PT. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do okay. not be scared as a civilian of the PT. Yes. You can do it's it. It's fun. As you long as you try. Collaborative. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, that's good. Really put that. Uh -huh. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. That's perfect. So. Um, Roughly four weeks, is that what you said? Roughly six weeks. Six, six, six. Closer to six. Um, awesome. And uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, we were getting cues from off, off, <laughs> off the screen, and I'm not sure what they meant. Um, but uh, so I apologize for being distracted there. Six week course, roughly. Yes. Uh, and how many students again? So we can have on average or a max of 32 students, 16 oh, wow. per instructor. Uh, we shoot for 30. We've yet to hit our goal though. So if you're watching and you want your civilians or your, your airmen to come through ALS, we're shooting for 30. Um, we typically average anywhere between 20 to 25, split into two flights. That's a great point. So let's say I'm, I'm watching now or I know somebody who's watching and, and they mentioned this to me. And I say, you know, I, I think I want to try that out. How would I go about getting on that list to get a, a, a class date? Yeah, so uh, you would like to sign up through your leadership, okay. specifically the first sergeants. Okay. Uh, so Great. know who your first sergeant is within your unit, and then go to them and tell them that you are interested. Uh, you do have to be the 36 months time in, time in service for a senior airman. So you do have to meet that requirement for senior, and you have to be a senior airman, so we do not take A1Cs. Um, so if you are a military member, that would be the way to go. Also civilians as well. Uh, it's just a recommendation from your leadership, and then go through your first sergeant. Okay, cool. That's good. So I did not realize there was uh, additional capacity left in the school. Open seats? Yes, uh, that's fellow. Yeah. So Absolutely. Yeah. definitely talk to your first shirts, yes. uh, talk to your leadership, 
and uh, and yeah, particularly for the civilian airmen, get that uh, get those recommendations in. So that's that's terrific. Um, so one of the, could you talk a little bit about some of the innovations that you pioneered here? I have heard uh, we we just heard from uh, Jonathan a little bit ago about the aura rings. I understand that's a, a pioneering uh, innovation here at the Ellington ALS. But maybe you can talk about some of the other things that you could do to inculcate that uh, culture of innovation. Absolutely. So just to kind of briefly touch back on the wearable devices, um, we have the aura ring and the Garmin watch. We're actually partnering with the company as well. That's helping us really focus on that holistic performance. How do we holistically become more healthy? How can we optimize our human performance? How can we invest in our everyday airmen so they can show up and know how they're feeling, know when they're ready and what they can take on in those days. Maybe you're not feeling your best that day and you know you have a lot of big heavy taskers to get out of the way. Maybe you can kind of push some things around, shift your schedule to make sure that you're optimizing your performance day in and day out. So that's just one of the things that we brought to the schoolhouse. We've also done things like mustard which was brought to us by the amazing uh, Sergeant Jeremy Nielsen. So Muster is kind of like a feedback device that we've incorporated in the schoolhouse to kind of help with that complete uh, feedback. The students can give feedback to one another as well as things that they felt about the course, um, plus or minus on certain uh, capacities as far as like where they felt they improved, how they felt their peers were improving, or things that they feel like they can continue to work on just again focusing on that well-rounded feedback tool. There's, there's a few others as well. Yeah, we have uh, Cloverleaf, we have our five voices, and these are basically like online platforms that we use where students can take quizzes, and it makes them more self-aware of like attributes that they have, so they find their leadership voice, what type of traits they have, uh, maybe what type of, what time of day do you operate at the most, at the most at? So like, uh, I, I'm more of a morning person, I know, my Commandant, Sergeant TM, she is an evening person. Uh, do not come at her in the morning with lots to do. She can tackle it in the evening. Uh, so we just learn more about each other, and then with Cloverleaf, we can make a whole team so you can go one-on-one -on -one with the student and say, like, what are the differences between us two? If we're having a hard time working together, why am I having such a hard time? And the um, platform will tell you a little bit more about, about each other. It also kind of provides that, that solution set, right? Uh, if you know what your differences are between the two, it kind of bridges the gap, so that, that way maybe there's a little bit less conflict or a little bit less friction. So the, the wearables are mainly focused on self, and then we have the assessments that kind of help you focus on how can you improve daily interactions yeah. with the people closest to you, your coworkers, your airmen, even your supervisors, your whoever you're you're daily interacting with. Yeah. That sounds like a super valuable tool, tool that we really probably should have across the Air Force. I was just talking to FTAC this morning and, and I kind of polled the crowd and it, there was nine different states, two different countries or US possessions. Um, age range was relatively the same, but we're talking, you know, all those folks grew up in a different um, different environmental factors, different ways, you know, understand life differently, right? So in this Air Force is so diverse to be able to get a tool like that so we, can, we know how each other interact and how to interact, interact with each other is super valuable. That's awesome. It's so cool to try that out. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely something that I feel our schoolhouse uh, you know, being test ALS, it's something that we try to emphasize too. Uh, there's a reason why we still have our names right here and then Air Force right here, because what you bring from this, this aspect, matters so much to what we're able to do as a team, right? And so if we can kind of focus on the person, help the person understand themselves and then optimize themselves, it'll make the team better, it'll make the mission more effortless. So I think having these tools, uh, it provides just invaluable, invaluable resources to us and helps to become just that next step better. Keep that competitive edge. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's terrific that uh, you focus on so many of the soft skills uh, that folks need to be effective supervisors and leaders, and you've innovated with a lot of these tools. Uh, we heard Jonathan talking a lot about uh, some of the feedback exercises. Are there any other uh, exercises or some of the other uh, activities or projects that you'd like to highlight and showcase to our viewers and either don't worry about it, you can handle it, or uh, you know, what are, the, what are the sorts of things that they can do to think, you know, prospective uh, applicants uh, to prepare for company ALS? 
just kind of go off of what you were talking about with uh, the FTAC of like how many countries, states, yeah. and everything that like people were coming from. And I think that's a huge thing that we do highlight in ALS is the diversity factor. Yes. Uh, so we do set aside like an entire day for diversity. And it starts off, um, we are in the auditorium with the entire class and they do about a two minute presentation just on themselves. It incorporates their job, but it mostly incorporates like, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? And it really gets the class running and they become way closer after that day because they're like, oh yeah, I played the drum set too. That's pretty cool, you know? Um, so I love that day and just highlighting on that diversity to bring back to your work centers and seeing how important that is within our teams and how we can build better teams is really incredible, so. Yeah, and I feel like as far as any resistance or hesitancy to come to ALS, uh, if anybody is experiencing that out there that's watching, um, I would say don't, right? Don't ex don't feel uh, don't feel hesitant, don't feel don't feel scared, don't feel like you can't accomplish it because like Miss Ayala was saying, it's definitely a team effort here. Um, your teammates, your classmates will never let you down, they will never let you fail. Us as cadre and our commandant, our primary job, our sole focus is to help you achieve success. Uh, so if you're nervous, if you're frightened, if you're scared, come talk to us, feel it out. Um, but we're here to make sure that your six weeks here are memorable, successful, and that you leave here becoming more self-aware and with a strong sense of networking and teamwork, friendships, all those connections. So. You make me want to go through it again. I mean, honestly, Sir, I mean, you did say the curriculum has changed. Uh, yeah, we would have to concur. It's probably changed just a little quite bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Just a few times. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Rebaseline. ALS 2.0. We're yeah. ready for you. Ready. Yeah, we're ready. Time schedule time. <laughs> so for any of the folks uh, who are out there who want to ask our cadre members their own questions, go ahead, text in your questions, 707-412-8922. Maybe we have a question. Yeah, okay. Maybe question. Okay. All right, so uh, any tips for NCOs considering a DSD? Okay, that's good. That's a great question because I think we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, right, you have to be in the right window and the right rank to do it. Uh, there has to be an opening. Right, so as you just heard that um, Texar and School Makers leaving us soon, um, we are currently hiring that, and if that's went out, uh, and you, we have to really kind of get career field released. So your career field gets a vote. Uh, so there, there's a few steps to that. Um, I would think you would also want to have a passion for teaching um, and bettering the airmen. So I'll leave it to you because you both do the job. So <laughs> that was my piece. So. Yeah is a big part of it, right? So having the passion to want to do a DHD um, and then the career field to release you. So I know security forces right now, you guys are pretty high up on your manning, so, or low on your manning, I guess. Uh, so you cannot get released for the most part, but um, just showing that interest, showing that drive to want to do it, and then pursuing it. That's the biggest thing is the pursuing factor, right? So don't take the first no as like, oh dang, keep trying. Keep trying, uh, keep trying for an opening, keep trying to apply for it, and yeah, just don't take that first now. Yeah. Keep going. Or I'm sure you, you all would be more than welcome to let people come over and, and talk to an instructor. Yes, absolutely. You get an idea, a day in the life of, and I would tell if you're listening or if you're still watching, um, if there's other career fields you're thinking about. Uh, it, sometimes the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, if you will. Uh, and going out and sampling and seeing what an air traffic controller who we had up here earlier uh, does, you know, for a day in life, or even an hour or two, gives you a better idea if that's something you really want to do. Absolutely, and I would just say, just be as transparent as possible when it comes to your desires, your aspirations, like what Sheila talked about earlier. And just hearing the aspirations that our airmen have, um, if you're communicating that with your leadership as well. I mean, just constantly provide them that input. Let them know that these are the things that, the goals that you're chasing, the things that you desire to do and, and help the Air Force with. Uh, the more they hear that consistently, the more your name's going to come to mind That's when right. these Absolutely. opportunities arise. I would also say, you know, stay up to date, uh, look on my purse, make sure you're checking out my vendor, using all of our different Air Force resources to allow you the opportunity to see what uh, positions are available. But I would say any opportunity that you do have to get out of your primary career field, 
jump on that opportunity because the growth that you'll experience during that time away is just amazing. And then you bring all of that back and just make it that much better. Yeah, we are kind of replacing our entire team within this next year. That's right. So if you are interested in applying for ALS, please come find us or our Commandant, Mass Sergeant Tercios Munoz. Uh, we have a slot opening soon in like July and then October. So there are plenty of slots opening if you are interested. Opportunities. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's right. So and. We should probably mention for all of our viewers that uh, the Amber Leadership Compound uh, School Complex is right behind the Education Center across from the Security Forces uh, Complex. So uh, hopefully folks know how know where to find that at Edward Jones Force Base. Sure. All right, so another question for you. What was, uh, to each of you, what was your favorite moment from your time here at uh, Ellington ALS so far? I've been here the longest, so I've got to think the hardest. It's been three years for me. All right, so Ashley, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, for me, uh, the transformation of the schoolhouse has been amazing. Uh, that started with Sergeant Hardesty. Probably started, actually started before Sergeant Hardesty, but he did a lot of the uh, fundraising for that through Sid Mill. Um, and we've definitely transformed this entire schoolhouse to what it is today. In the cadre, we literally were painting the walls ourselves. Uh, so if you go around the schoolhouse, all of these changes that you see on the wall, like we literally put our hands on and did. So it's very cool to see the team come together. And now it's a stable on Edwards Air Force Base that people love to come and view. So that's been one of the coolest moments for me. Yeah, if I can add on, I'm going to give you a minute or two to think. You're probably sorting through a thousand things. Uh, when I recently did my walkthrough, when I first got here, this ALS looks different than any other ALS that I've seen. And I've seen quite a few. Um, just like they said, the painting piece. Uh, they have a room where students can go and kind of kickbacks not the right word, but relax a little bit, not feel as on edge, and kind of just talk about stuff. Talk about what they learned and, and what, what's going on in the curriculum. It's, you still see the uh, other ALSs. Um, some of the heritage stuff you, you all put up, it's just, it's, it's really cool. It, it just feels really almost non-military-esque, if you will. I mean, there's stripes under the walls and stuff like that in our history, but it, but it doesn't feel as formal as others, and it's really cool here. So if you're out there and you've ever wondered what it looks like, come on over, I'm sure they'll show you around, as long as you don't have classes in session. Uh, it, it's a really impressive campus. I don't have a lot of basis for comparison, but it is an incredibly inviting uh, environment for, for discussion, and, and it sounds like it's facilitating. facilitating. Uh, those, the development of a lot of those soft skills and that open dialogue with the instructor and student and among the classmates. So that's the best All right, coach. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to keep it simple. I mean, I think the thing that I'll take away the most from this and what's meant the most for, for me, at least, was just, you know, you said transformation of the schoolhouse, but just the transformation of the airmen, uh, big A airmen, whether it's uniform wearing airmen or civilian airmen. Seeing them come through the doors on, on day zero, maybe a little nervous, a little skittish, kind of keep to themselves. And then at the end of the six weeks, it's almost like they were nervous to come to ALS. They heard horror stories, and now they don't want to leave. They love it so much. They love the connections. They love the environment and the camaraderie. I think just watching that transformation happen and seeing them become more self-aware and just really understanding the whole concept of teamwork collaboration I mean, it, it just makes me excited for for going back into you know big operational air force and, and seeing all of these airmen now taking charge and, and leading the front leading the effort so i think for me the biggest thing has just been watching the airmen that's awesome that really is. Um, and that doesn't happen without the contract without you tm and the other instructors before um, we can have a really nice campus with cool stuff which we do and other stuff, but it, it's the people, right, going back to people that, that make ALS what it is. You're responsible for that transformation. So walk proud on your way out of the last class and uh, know that 400 students and then secondary tertiary effects of those students and what, they, what they're doing in the Air Force, it's just, it's invaluable. I mean, you cannot put, you know, a value on that. It's amazing. So we are getting close to the end of the broadcast. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone out there that uh, text in your questions, 707-412-8922. We can try to squeeze in a few more questions uh, before we get to the end of the broadcast. Um, one of the last questions we had in the last batch was, so for each of you, uh, what lessons can you pass on from your time at ALS as instructors? Similar question to the last one. 
but I think uh, the, the difference been is, you know, what, what lesson would you pass on for what you learned and are taking away that you're going to take away to your career field? Um, so to other instructors, then also, kind of what what is the other uh, kind of key lessons that you hope students walk out the door with after their time here? So kind of two part question. All right. You can pick whichever one you want. I mean, as far as curriculum, when we're looking at the challenges that our Air Force has, right, that our nation has, I think critical thinking and problem solving are, are big portions of our curriculum that we stress a lot just because it takes a lot of that to make our force better, to make our units better, to make our mission better, to make it more effective so we can maintain that that edge or you know keep up with the, the pace of our competitors. Um, so I think as far as curriculum is concerned, problem solving is probably one of my favorite lessons and some of the favorite you know topics that we discuss. And this last class really seemed to enjoy the problem solving module. They came up with some really awesome presentations related to Air Force problems. So they're getting after it too, and they're excited to start you know get the gears turning and start to solve these problems as well. Yeah, as far as uh, you said. Uh, the lessons I hope the students take away from this, and I think we hit on it already a little bit, is the people, right? It doesn't matter what paint is on the walls, it doesn't matter how cool your unit looks when you walk in, but like really leaning on the people, and I think you heard that with both uh, the students that were up here earlier, and it's, it made me so happy to hear that those were some of the lessons that they took away was actually learning more about your people, leaning on your people, and just because they're a senior airman or an A1C, that doesn't mean they don't know how to lead and they don't know what they're doing. Um, just really leaning on those resources and coming together and making a team better. Oh, that's terrific. Any uh, parting thoughts, Chief? Do we have time? Okay, yes. So, <clears throat> it, 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 I think it's fitting we're here at ALS with the cadre and we had a couple students in here. Because uh, I wholeheartedly feel uh, that our people are a competitive advantage. Uh, we are the best military in the world because we do stuff like this, right? You can look at the models, and, and I've, I've, I've seen it in other countries. They just do not. So if you're looking for the secrets to why we're great, I'm telling you, it's because we <laughs> invest in our enlisted corps. And we trust our enlisted corps from very young ranks to, to take on things and to run things and be in charge of things. And that all happens and starts here. Leadership doesn't necessarily start, and I've been rebaseline that. Like I talked about uh, last night, you, you're leading throughout your life, but here you give them the tools they need to go out and be effective leaders, and to deal with people that don't think the way they do, or you know don't act and they don't understand themselves. People are a competitive advantage, and it's all about people, and you are making that happen. So thank you. Thanks, thanks for letting us out. And let us over here to do this. I couldn't agree more, Chief. Uh, the professionalization of the NCO Corps and that deliberate approach of arming our uh, enlisted corps with the, the skills uh, to be effective supervisors, to be effective leaders. That is how we will compete uh, as a nation. So, so it really does great credit uh, to both of you and to all the cadre uh, here at the Air Leadership School for the thoughts and things that you do to pioneer and make this school uh, great. And also, just the things that you're going to be able to take away from this uh, as an assignment and continue to uh, to develop additional leaders. So that's fan that's fantastic. Any parting thoughts uh, to the viewers before we uh, sign off? We look forward to seeing you all here at ALS. Okay. Apply if you're interested. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here uh, in your house uh, so that we can uh, showcase the awesome work that you do here. Again, from. Uh, the Center of the Aerospace Testing Universe, uh, Chief Swistak and I are glad you're able to join us as we showcase the Airman Leadership School here at Edwards Air Force Base. So until next week, uh, where Reader General Hyder will be back uh, yeah, with you. So, or with no, you, Chief Ward Swanigan. Chief Ward Swanigan, so, yes, Chief Ward Swanigan yeah. and General Hyder will be back uh, to host Town Hall. So we hope to see you then online. Make sure to text in your questions, 707-412-8922. Have a great weekend. Everybody take care.